Can you guys hear me now? Can you guys hear me now? Let, let me know if you can hear me now. Okay, cool. So what I was saying is um, we're going to turn this blank that we had from the other day that we did, what, like um, six blanks live. And um, I used a tray. I'll show you the tray. This tray here. Then we have the um, the other ones that we did. These came out pretty cool. This one's like a sandy one. I don't know about much if it's too, you know, and it's thin. It was like the last pour. But um, yeah, we're gonna do this one that's gold and and uh, purple. And what I was saying, I didn't realize that the um, audio was not working. What I was saying is that I'm using tape so it can be affixed with hot glue so it doesn't go flying off. Um, and I do have double-sided tape that I could use, but essentially I'm going to use that later when I flip it over um, if I need to, you know, gently remove material. So this is heated up and I'll just poke it with this because the uh, tube is well almost done actually and in fact it might be you know what it always happens that way but I don't think I have enough hot glue to fucking ram, ram this all the way through. I have to get more hot glue. Can you believe that crap? I guess we'll do that. I have to go in the shed to get more hot glue because this ain't cutting it, frankly. And I used this um, screwdriver to push the rest of the, the what was remaining of the tube but there's nothing in there. So this little dab here is useless. And I'll just remove it so I don't have to deal with that little bubble. We'll add another strip of tape well placed there. And we'll get a stick of hot glue. I'll be right back. All right. Luckily, luckily, we have plenty of um, glue sticks to work with. And just insert. Oh well, hell. There's um, glue riding up in there because of my exploratory committee so it's stuck up in there let's see if this will fit in now okay okay I think I jammed this thing live on air. All 
un unbelievable, but true. I hope it doesn't go flying off. Can you believe this? I jammed this thing. All right. I should have just left well enough alone. So this is going to dry. I'm going to let it sort of suck into the uh, the grain and dry in there so it's nice and affixed, although it is already. And um, we're looking to do a, a little over an inch. I just did a video on this one and um, where we completed it with all the hardware and stuff. This is a, 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 big, a good size um, pendant. This one here, really dig that one. So it'll probably end up being something like this. That tray that I, and in fact, it's perfect for I could, I could probably, no, I can't make, I was going to say I could make two because it's so thick, but we'll probably end up, we'll see the shape that, that comes out. But these little trays are pretty, pretty good because it's about the size at the, at the base, just about with a little extra left over of these pendants and it sh chamfers out. So it's pretty cool. I think that it kind of does the trick. As far as the size, now it's hard to get them out without using some sort of um, release or whatnot, but that's fine. Um, since I have extra, I dig with a knife on the side and just pop, and they pop out. So we're going to go ahead and... Um, Turn this. Oh, I also I have some some issues as well with um, this tool. I freaking chipped it. The square carbide. I could turn it to the back facing one. Um, which I might just go ahead and do. Why risk it, right? All I need to do is find my trusty screwdriver. The neighbors are, I don't know if you guys can hear it, you tell me, but the neighbors are playing their stupid music, but loud enough so that everybody could hear it. They're idiots. So we're unscrewing. And we'll put it on the side that actually works. They're playing like Spanish rap music. So the, the retardation is in full effect. All right. And unfortunately, unfortunately, my window is right next to it. You guys could tell me if you hear it or not. Okay, that's pretty solid. Hey, what's going on, Bob? I tagged you in the, uh, give me one second. I tagged you in this video, Bob, because um, I'm using your lathe tools and I linked your channel. Um, we've got a blank here. I don't know if you saw this before, but we've got this this resin blank that we um, with mica powders, and um, 
Yeah, you know, this whole thing is fun uh, do, doing these because, you know, it's a manageable size. It does create a, a truckload of this, but even the small piece, but it's fun. And, um, and you're doing something that's cool, you know, that looks, that looks like something interesting, you know, very, fairly quickly. So a couple of things about this particular lathe and when I put these tools on here, it rides a little bit proud, high of center. So you'll see me, you know, playing with it to get the right, the right cut. I did bust, ch uh, shatter a little corner uh, and have turned it. So I'm going to have to get more of these, but this has been in the spent. So I do have to shave off a little bit of the front. So uh, as far as the um, the shaft here, just a little bit here. Um, but anyways, so we're going to um, mess with that. But we're going to do this with the round first. And this round one. Well, we'll see. We'll just play with it. It's all it's all in the name of fun. So we'll go ahead and, and do that now. And just get some sort of shape that we like little by little. We're not meaning to be aggressive here. Although I might end up being. And it's very thick. It's actually very thick. Oh, that's what we wanted. As you saw, or if you didn't, it popped right out. I'm just gonna, I don't know if you can see this. Here, I'll do it here. We're going to use the tape, screw it. And um, it might pop out again as well. I needed to use more of that heat, uh, the um, glue. I have to clean out that gun because I stuck a screwdriver in it. And to push out the remaining glue, and now it's all funky. You don't know how annoying it is. I went live, and um, the neighbors are playing crappy music at full volume. So that's stuck on there. I'm going to go lighter. You have no idea how annoying when you're working and you hear that. Although, you know, this is not a loud tool per se. Um, you're hearing like this. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Okay, so Dave says best, best not use the tape it'll stick better to resin um yeah but last time i had the cleanup on the other side it really stuck well and so that's why i tried this um the previous thing so the tape is actually the tape did the tape stay on there i don't remember but anyways i tried it because last time i did direct and it stuck too too well where I had to sort of really work to clean up the back. All right, let's try again. Let's hope for the best. We'll go slow. success at all now am I any advice 
I can't be too aggressive with it, apparently, because it'll catch and pull. Yeah, it's it's not sticking as as it should, and I sort of lost the blank. Well, I thought this was going to go smooth, but apparently I can't get the darn thing to stick up on there. I'm looking for the little bugger right now. And your guess is as good as mine because he went flying. See if we can find him. Why that blank can be anywhere. Can you believe it? It's that just perfect for for live. Looking for it, but it's nowhere to be found. So what we'll do is we'll make an executive decision. And I'll find it later. And we'll affix this directly to this, like you were saying originally. I didn't want to do that because I don't want to mar this. Um, Boy, where did that other blank go? Because I really wanted to do that one because it's got the Jimi Hendrix yellow and gold vibe going on. I did find a piece of um, Paduke. Well, for the sake of this line, we'll go ahead and um, this glue gun is really being a mess. Everything went wrong this time. And I can tell you once the music went on, that salsa music on the other side, it was all over. It's like um, intense. How am I going to get this stuff out of here, man? I need to um, scrape. All right. We got a fair amount of it out. The glue stuck to um, okay, that's good. So it's heating up. We'll not bother with this end. We'll go with the new end. 
and we're going to go direct. Let me look at what you're saying. How about roughing up the blank and also where it mounts? Yeah, we could do that. I'll wrap it up a little bit. We'll do that. I really need to find that other blank, but again, we'll take care of that later. Um, I, I am going to, where's that blue one that I just had here? Uh, am I missing two of them now? Did it fall? Did you guys see where that one went? I had one up here, did I? Here it is. It blends in with the green of the, uh, <laughs> um, it'd be good if I can shave off a little bit of the edge. Shave off a little bit of the edge. We're just taking off this little edge that when you pour it, the uh, resin rides, creeps up along the edges and causes like some, a little bit of a lip. And since it's elevated, um, it doesn't sit as flush to the, to the uh, face plate. So, by doing this, we're removing a little bit of that, at least. And it's going to be turned away anyhow. I'm keeping my fingers away. It may look like I'm not, but I am. Been there, done that. Man, these people next door, or in front, the house in front, they want to be as annoying as they can possibly be. All right, so we're going to go direct. It's unfortunate it's going to stick to this, which I didn't want to do, but... Yeah, we're going heavy duty. We'll let that cool off. Let's see. Hey, what's up? Everybody's in the house. Demo. Herb. Careful with the knife there, Eloy. Remember the safety saying towards your towards your buddy, not your body. <laughs> give it a good give it a good bit of pressure. Yeah, stab a friend, not your heart. <laughs> Is this so let me get this straight. Um, Christmas, everybody's all and then now it's blood and guts. So the funny thing is, um, before you guys had joined, Dave and I were hanging out here, and um, and so, man, there's chatter here on this thing. Um, I'm gonna have to dig in and really shape this. 
Uh, I had another blank on here, and it went flying like three times. About Dave, uh, three times, and it went flying. And um, the third time, that's why I'm using the glue directly, like Dave suggested. And I marred up, scratched up the um, surface. We're gonna see if it flies off again. But um, what happened was the third time it flew off, it flew off into the valley of the unknown. And I don't know where the heck that blank is. It sure as hell didn't fly out of here. Well, it kind of did, but it should be in here because I don't think it has the ability to fly further than it was flung. But it's an unfortunate thing because I really wanted to turn that one. Now I'm going to have to do a little bit of a search to see where the heck that thing landed. And frankly, your guess will be as good as mine because I have to move a bunch of stuff and deal with the uh, the search, you know, that we all go through when something gets tossed into the unknown. It's a, it's a funny thing. So... I guess, what do you say? It's been in enough time. It's probably still cooling off. We'll give it half a minute more. In the meantime, I'm just going to do a little peek around, see if I get lucky. Luck be a lady tonight. Well, we did find a piece of Padoo, so that's always good. Got another piece here. We will find that piece, guys. Maybe not today, but when we're old and retired, I'm sure it will pop up. All right, I think that's good. Let's hope that this thing doesn't fly off, for goodness sakes. Oh, man, and the, the neighbors are playing stupid music um, loud, which really puts me in a bad mood uh, because it's stupid music as opposed to not stupid music. All right, let's try. I also don't have the proper. Steve was saying something about a, a ne negative rate. Steve was saying something about a, a negative rate. I'm going to have to go in because I've got um, I, I've, I've got to reduce this significantly because I've got where I pulled the piece. I'll show you just so you can see what's going on. And in the meantime, I can get rid of that. Um, so this is where we're at right now, but I'm going to have to go s straight in. Or I'll, you know what? I'm just going to get rid of everything on the outside and work my way in because I don't want to 
mess this up. I think this is on pretty cool, but um, solid. But um, when I did the mold in, um, or the blank, I'm sorry, in these, it sticks pretty good. So I had to use a knife to the edge, but it's oversized just for that uh, case. I chose it because it's oversized and I can remove the edge to make it the size I want. I could get the release stuff, right? So I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna go in a good amount. I'll work it to that level. Now the reason I'm edging, I'm going sideways. The reason I'm going sideways with that is because, see here's the, the chip from the edge, is that I've got screws that are kind of, I've been eating away at this, so it's time to change this wood. And I have not done that. So I'm skirting around it. Well, we did almost get rid of it. And now it's gotten, it's completely gotten rid of. Oh, I've got a step here that I did mistake, uh, sadly. So I made it go smaller, if that makes any sense. I need to round it way more, um, but it's looking pretty neat. It's looking very neat. Do have to round it more, remove more material. I'll show you guys where I'm at. I'll show you guys where I'm at and I'll dip a little water so that you can see how it looks. I can't read the uh, new comments because I have to physically move the, the dial forward. So I'll do that in a second as well. So here's what we have so far. You can see the screws I'm working around. That's pretty neat. I do want to go thinner though with it. So I could drill the little hole and put that hardware on it without it bulking out too much. Although I don't, I've got some sh shatter here. I'm going to have to fix that. Hopefully it doesn't go too deep, but it's going to go much thinner than it is now. Let me move the, the things so I can see what, oh, there, it kind of moved. Cause of chatter, it makes plate sit, not flat. What? He has a copper wire acting as a washer. Yeah, explain that to them, Doc. You know what's going on. Actually, Doc, are you close to your, your PC? Are you close to your PC, Doc? I'm gonna give you the, 
actually, if I give you the link, I, I can hear you talk from the other room, maybe, but there might be an echo. Okay, yeah, so let me give you the link. Who else wants the link? Who else wants the link to hang out? Um, Doc, whoever else wants the link, you could link them as long as they're they're part of our group of friends. Hey, Tracy. Yo. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, listen, dude. Pull pull that check off. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let's not get too instructional until I get this side of the thing now. Can you hear me in here or can you hear me? Can you hear me, Doc? Yeah. Doc, can you hear me? Because I have okay, here's the thing. I hear you on the in the other room. But I don't. Um, there's a there's an echo. Can you hear an echo on me? Yeah. Yeah, because you're listening to the live show. See if that's a fact. That's the facts, Jack. All right. So you'll let me know what people are saying. But um, what were you going to say? Listen, I'm, I'm not interested in, in in doing anything other than shaking no, this thing. No, no, no. Listen. Uh, reason I popped in, and I can only stay a second. Back that faceplate off. Back it off. Take it off. That copper washer that you made, Eloy, it can't overlap itself. You see it's how it's, you see how it's two. Yeah, but it's got to be, it's got to be single ply all the way around. That's okay, making. But it, okay, but it's been working just fine. Right, but that's making your faceplate not sit flush. That's why you're getting that chatter on the sides because when oh. you address it, it's 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 causing just a little bit of flutter because okay. it's thicker on one side than the other. Okay. Let me see if I can get to it. All right. I got to get back out in the driveway. I got my <laughs> snowblower running. I'm getting ready for the impending storm, but I just wanted to pop in and did, throw, did, my, throw, throw my two cents into the peanut gallery. Okay. Um, by the way, we're talking delayed because you guys out there are probably listening to Doc saying it a little bit late. I don't know how the thing is, is uh, going to turn out since we have... Um, uh, but Doc, before you go, mm -hmm. um, was there anybody else that was reaching for uh, a link? Um, let me see. <laughs> any any wood turning experts? <laughs> If not, think, that's fine, Doc. I think, uh, hold, hold on. I got a, I got one. I just sent a link to the general. To who? The general. The general? Yes. Who's the general? If if I might the general why general generally oh okay oh okay yeah see now it's all single ply all right okay cool are all you right, bud. Oh, well go ahead I'm sorry no that's it now are you hearing me through the internet or, or, or are you hearing me through the live? Or are you hearing me through the... I'm hearing you through the Hangout. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, this uh, works good. It's a good setup for you. 
Yeah. Well, no, I like the copper. The copper idea is like my favorite thing since sliced bread. Um, this is looking good. I think so. Um, before you came in, I had another one on mm -hmm. the yellow and 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 purple one that we did yesterday or the other day. Right. And I had stuck it with first with tape and um, hot glue because I didn't want to. Right now, it's it's stuck with hot glue, so the back's gonna be marred. But whatever, I could clean it up gently. Um, but I did that, and it freaking flew off. I put it back on with another method. It flew off, and then the third time it flew off, and now it's lost somewhere. Back. <laughs> I have no idea where that thing is is at. It'll show up. So. Cool, well, dude. All, all right. right. Good luck to you with that. And the other thing is, instead of making a new piece of wood, you should just face that one and glue another piece right onto it. Oh, okay. And just keep going. Okay. Sounds like a like a plan, dude. All right. Thank you. All right, brother. We'll talk to you later. That's Doc Jared Helderbrand um, with, what is it? Something Sparks? Um, dirty, at Dirty underscore Sparky. Dirty underscore Sparky, ladies and gentlemen, if you've not followed that happening over on the Instagram, you are nobody. <laughs> all right, bye bye, Mel. All right, all right, dude. So that was Doc Jared Hildebrandt, and um, I'm glad you guys saw that and mentioned that. So we have to get rid of the chatter here, and let's see if that improves our are turning. Oh. Let me see what's going on here. Well, we did get rid of the um we did get rid of the uh, apparent chatter. Let me see about its shape. Yeah, it's still a little thick. I'm going to show you the shape, guys, and you tell me what you guys think right now um, as far as this shape. I might have to do more. I know I can see here that I have to shape it more to my liking, but that's pretty neat. I'm going to round it more because it's not quite there, but... That's pretty cool. Now, removing this is going to be a pain in the butt, Dave, if you're there.
Okay. I don't want to go further than that. I'll show you guys what we have. No. That's what we have. Now they're playing some sad piano music next door. This has been like an insane adventure. That's what we have. Um, eventually we have to remove it. It's gonna be a hot mess. Since Bob Lee has not joined us with the link, or I don't know if if Doc linked him or not, I'll just uh, so so I can read your messages. All right, now I'm back. I, I left it with Bob, so now let's see um, who's there. Awesome. What's going on? Awesome wood thing. We just did this. I don't know how long ago you uh, saw that, but we just did this. Um, so it's stuck on there with hot glue. Uh, with hot glue. So I'm going to have to spatula out the thing. We'll see what, how we get that out but the back is gonna need to be cleaned up, which is what I was trying to avoid earlier when you weren't around. Um, the thing is that, well, I don't, I don't wanna deal with cleaning up the back as much, but we'll see what happens. Because sometimes it gets, and the hot glue just does not wanna release. So I tried doing the method where I put tape in order to you know, um, have a layer of protection to the back of the uh, pendant, um, a barrier from the glue sticking to it, but unfortunately the tape, well, it did what the tape did. Then we tried this um, double-sided tape, but no. Hey, Jim, what's going on? So I guess we'll clean up the face of it using these little pads. Um, I'll show you something that um, oh, we have. Give me one second here. Give me a second. All right, sorry about that. So we have Let me correct make this Let's See we have Oh boy, how the hell did I line this up? Okay, 1 2 3 4 So anyways, these are lined up I have to turn this one around this way, I believe. This one this way. Yeah. All right. So we have these marked from the lowest grit to the highest grit. And uh, Mark Saunders showed me his batch of, of micro mesh, and he did that too. And I thought that was pretty cool. So we're doing it too. Um, 
put a little napkin here. And I've got this little tray with water, which we're going to clean up. We cleaned it up and added fresh water right here. And we'll just place that there. And we'll, we have our micro mesh over here. And we have our piece here. Um, I'm going to sort of sand this with 220. Or actually, let me see here. Let me see here. Here's a little piece of 1,000. And we'll just hit it with that before. Maybe I can bring it closer for you guys to see. I don't know if, if, that, if that's good or not, or good enough. Let me see what we got here. Okay, we've got some, some chattering. If not, I'll go rougher and um, yeah, there's right here, there's roughness all along this edge and it's unfortunate, but we will go back to 20. Still got a little bit of it. I still have to hit it. I want to get rid of the scrap, um, these divots. I may, I don't want to go with the tool again because I really don't want to change the shape of it no more. So we're doing. 240. It's a little bit less, but it's still there. It's significant. So we're going to go a little bit more aggressive. A little bit more aggressive. Clean it up. And that chatter is, is deep along the edges here. That chatter is deep along the edges. In the middle, not, not, not bad. There's nothing. But I can feel it right on the edges. What do you guys suggest? Should I just go and do it again? Hit it lightly? Because I do feel it. I could just sand it down, which I probably, I guess that might be the answer. Hi, everybody that just joined. Javi, everyone. Just a morning 
relaxing pendant making. We've got a little bit of chatter going on. Yeah, it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. It's deep too. It could be from the epoxy itself. It could be from the epoxy itself as well. So we might have to um, unfortunately hit it with the, um, the tool again. And I don't know how deep it's gonna go. This is just how it is. What can you do? You know, what can one do? Show you guys. There's a very light around the edge. Sort of divots in there. Let me see what you guys say. Try 80 grit, Dave says. Well, we could do that. Can I find some 80 grit here in this in this um, vast ocean? Here's 60 grit. <laughs> oh man, 60 grit. What do you say about 60 grit, Dave? What say you? Do we or do we not? Let's try it. Screw it. It certainly reduced it and created scratches. I think they're all but removed. Yeah, they're all but removed. Let's go back down. I've got 120. Sometimes this is just how it plays out, apparently. It's a manageable size project, for goodness sakes, but just the same, we... Um, we have to deal with issues. Let's see. Well, we did get rid of it with the 80 grit, Dave. Here's what we have. So now we're pretty good. Um, we just have to go down uh, or yeah, higher in uh, grits. And I'll hit it with 120 and then we'll go to the micro mesh. What do you say? We'll go with 120, little piece. We'll go 120, clean it up. I'll hit it with 120 again, but light. Let's see how that looks. 
well, it did just doing that did give it a little bit of um. I don't want to say there are. We're gonna end. We'll see if we see tooling marks on it, but that's what we have so far. And we have the issue about the back, but this is um, which is hot glued to the thing, so I have to scrape it. Um, I hit it with 120, so I guess we could go to the micro mesh. What, what say you? Here's the micro meshes. We'll just hit that there. We're going to use this piece of paper to clean between um, sanding. Never use micro mesh, um, but never turned resin either. All right, hey, Lindsay's in the house as well, Crosscut, Ruboa Arts, Doc Roll Herb. Let's see, Let's. we're gonna hit it with the first of the pads. What I'm gonna do, is I'm going to hit it with all the pads lightly first, just all the way down or up one time, just one time, just to see what that that looks like. And we'll look at the results together and this is a light going up the grits with the micro mesh will we see tooling marks will it be it'll be shinier I, I i i am quite positive how shiny we do not know but we'll find out and again, we're doing a light, it's going to be a light, one-time pass of all the grits with the micro mesh. We could always go back and tweak. That 80 grit sure did the trick. We're going very light. And we'll see what we have. All right. We have um still opaque. And I don't know how high how high up we're gonna be able to go, but it's cleaned up. It's smooth. Um, it's looking nice. We just have to get it kind of glossy. What do you guys think? Thoughts? Tell me. What do you guys think? We're going to go through the micro meshes again. Gently. Let me make sure that my micro meshes are set to the right um, order. As I was mentioning the other day, we had um, we were on Hangouts and on Makers Media Network, and Mark Saunders up in Pennsylvania was there, and he um, he said, "Well, hey, I do this, 
to my micro meshes so that I always know what's going on. And I thought that just, it's a, it's a great idea. So it, you know, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, and it keeps going. Um, I have to turn a few over so it can look like the actual pyramid that it is. There you kind of can see it. I don't know why this one moved over. I know I started it there. It should be like that. But you can see the little, you can see the little, um, that way you keep track as who can remember these color variations. Tell me. Can you? I don't know. I can't. So we're going to start with the highest, the lowest grid, I'm sorry. Again. We might have to go to a regular sandpaper of like wet sand, regular sandpaper of like a thousand grit, which we did use earlier a little bit. Because these might be too fine for, you know, to get it to where we need it to be. And the thing is, it doesn't necessarily, everybody looks for shiny and it doesn't necessarily have to be freaking shiny. Although shiny is nice. Shiny things are cool. It might be a matter since we hit it with 80 and then work our way up. It might be a matter of we need to go and play with a thousand grit a little bit more. See if I have even higher than that on regular sandpaper before I hit the micro mesh with it. Or it might work out. Final two. Final one. What do you say, Eloy? Oh, I, I hear somebody in the hangout. <laughs> yeah, I finally made it work. <laughs> I don't know who it is because they're in the other room. I'll right. check right now. It's Bob. I made it work. Hey, Bob. How's it going? <laughs> I don't know. I I was having trouble getting on with the uh, the Google Hangout. Yeah. Um, so it's working, but I didn't. Uh, I don't know what I did, but I managed to get it to do it. I'm just raising the volume. I'm just raising the volume in the other room so that I can hear you. You can hear me now, yeah. 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 I raised the volume so I can hear you because we've got the neighbors doing a conga line of music. <laughs> I and heard. What's that? I heard them. Oh, you can hear it through the. A little bit. It's all muffled, but I could hear them at the time earlier in the hangout. Well, over here, it's magnified times 10. So just imagine we're having a conga procession 
right here where we're at. Well, you, you can do the cha-cha then. Yeah, but, you know, well, you know, I guess that's a new thing. You know, I think you might have something there. So if we do the cha-cha while, while working with, with um, the lathe, that might be a new – we're incorporating a new um, – <laughs> <laughs> I'm, incident, incidentally, I'm seeing you delayed on the actual screen, but I can hear you real time because you're in the room um, with the speakers in the room. I just shut it so that um, while I'm talking, there's no echo, but I can hear you real time. But I'm only seeing what everybody does see uh, as they see it out there with, with a little bit of a delay. I'm talking, there's no echo, but I can hear you real time. And I can hear myself echo through your thing. Yeah, I just shut my phone off uh, or so I can read the. Uh, uh. So this is what we have. And um, how did you finally attach it? What's that now? How did you finally attach it? So what happened was that um, Dave, the wood barber said, oh, well, um, how about you just go ahead and hot glue it directly. And I said, well, Dave, I don't want to have the issue that I'm gonna have now because I, I did that where it sticks too well and it's gonna be a pain and then I have to clean up the back. I don't wanna sound lazy or anything, but the point um, of my doing these is to try to get them in and out as quickly as possible, as opposed to spending, obviously we're doing this live just to hang out with our buddies and whatnot. But um, like when I'm not doing that, I wanna put them in, do them, Boom, get them out, next one, and next one. This glue thing is a pain in the butt because now it's stuck up on in there. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's looking nice. It doesn't have the shine. We haven't buffed it or anything yet. I'm wondering what they what the opinion of everyone is. Um, it'd be nice if it had more luster prior to me doing the polishing and buffing and all that jazz. But um, people that have used the micro mesh, what's the story? Can we get bright? Um, can we get more shine out of this prior to buffing? What is the lowdown on that for you guys that would turn? That's my question to them. So how's it been going, Bob? All pretty good. I've been playing down in the basement. That's where I'm at right now. At my place, we're getting a lot of snow now. We're supposed to get anywhere from six to 12 inches. How's your chair coming out? Uh, I haven't worked on it today. I've been doing uh, some putting some uh, mounting hardware on some things that my wife got for Christmas. And uh, I'm kind of cleaning up the one corner of my shop because I'm trying to build like a spray booth apparatus type thing here in the corner or eventually we'll be building one for my smaller projects so that I can actually uh, vent them outside uh, make a spray but you know kind of a small spray booth so I can spray lacquer and stuff inside the house hmm. oh well talking about spray lacquer what what do people think about hitting this with a spray, say, poly, to push out the shine by force and then hitting it with a sealer and calling it a day. What do people think about that? Is that ghetto? Is, the, is, is that wrong? I don't want to do that. I want it to come out naturally from the plastic that we've, that we've done. But again, I'm trying, to find, I'm trying to find a good balance between getting them nice and, and turning, you know, having turnaround. You know, you know what I'm saying. I hear you. I don't yeah. know. What, I don't know much about the acrylics. That's my. Uh, I'd have to. Uh, uh, I have to tip my hat to Robert up there at Crosscut Creations because uh, I know nothing about the acrylics. Well, Crosscut was on here. He should have chimed in so we know what the story is. I'm gonna hit this again and see if it goes, but we're going in circles with it. I mean, it's got a nice look to it as is, Bob, but 
I'm being an exaggeranus. Uh, Robert saying something about uh, use uh, dry sand 120 to 400 and then go micro mesh. Okay, say that one more time because between the lathe and the conga line outside, I, I kind of. Uh... Okay, he's saying go 120 to 400 with regular dry sandpaper and then use micro mesh and probably use the micro mesh wet. Right. Well, the micro mesh is being used wet. I oh, have a little. I, I have I'm, a little. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Yeah, I have this little tray here, and I dip it, and I go. Um, at least that's my method. So 400, huh? Yeah, he he's saying go clear to 400. Well, I don't have 400. I have a thousand. What do you think, Robert? I have a thousand of the regular, oh, or wet sand regular. What's Robert saying? That's Robert from Crosscut Creations. You could go and follow him on his channel, Crosscut Creations. That should work, he said. All right, so we just have to find some thousand grit, and we've got some. Actually, I've got. I got thousand two hundred. Would it be better to? We'll do a thousand. We'll do a thousand. Let's do a thousand. This is a thousand right here. And um, Because Robert gets his pens really shiny, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Well, we want that. If we can. If not, we're not going to be, you know, stomping on the floor over the fact that we can't. But can't's not in my, my language vocabulary only cannot Robert's also saying run the lathe at about 750 rpms and then do a, each pad about 30 times okay say, say that again I'm sorry he said lower you well, I don't know. Uh, he said 750 RPMs on the lathe. Then use each micro mesh pad until it builds up a slurry. All right. I'm just going over it again because I felt like a little... I felt a little bump. Which is now gone. Man, Bob, you should hear the it sounds like a war zone of music out there, but and not in a good way. It's like horrible. I'm gonna go see what the heck because it's disturbing. One sec. All right. It's the worst case scenario of music that you could possibly imagine in your life. It actually got louder when you opened up the door. Well, just imagine what we got going <laughs> here in person. It's horrible. So he said to hit it, let the slurry occur, go to the next one, and so on and so forth. Yeah, each micro mesh pad go up. But he said, let it, uh, I guess he said something about 30 times or, you know, 30 revolutions or something. I don't know. What do you think, Robert? 
we'll wait for him to answer. Well, I'm, I, I don't necessarily want to do that 30 times. <laughs> <laughs> It's looking nice as as is right now, but dull, right? It doesn't have, it's matte, and we don't want matte. I mean, some people, some people that will wear, wear this might not. You know how it is, right? Some people like the different sheens and stuff. So some people are perfect, would be perfectly content with something. It just depends on on the evening, you know, out and whatnot. Um, do you want something bright? Do you want? Uh, there's variations in. Oh, Robert says he counts up to 30 when he's running at each micro pad. So he does what again? He counts to 30 in his head. Gotcha. A rough 30 seconds on with each micro pad. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and um, try that. Jim Dockerel said it's okay for you to to count in Spanish, Eloy. Okay, say that again. I'm sorry. Uh, Jim Doctoral said it's okay for you to count in Spanish. Mm. <laughs> well, I counted up to 30 in English. And so you have to have a lot of patience, but I do feel smoothness over there, you know, yeah. on, on the, the, the piece. So hey, we're going to. So said, make sure you move the pad around and don't stay too long in one spot. Okay. All right. What does he say about pressure? Because I go light. I don't press down. Uh, Robert, what do you say? He hasn't responded to me yet, but it will, because I'm w working with the delay here. Be sure to keep, okay, never mind. Light pressure is what he's saying, Eloy. Yep, that's that's what I've been doing. Okay, so that that confirms it. It, it has created a much smoother the just giving it a little bit more patience. Um, I hate the idea of counting, but I get the the gist of it. You don't want to just uh, go a little bit and then forget it, you know, and just move on. You want to let it um, do its thing. Um, I don't like counting as I'm doing this. It kills the buzz, man. <laughs> well, it's just the length or period of time that he's uh, that he's talking about because it's it is the period of time or the uh, the. Well, let's see what he says about what does Robert say about um, oh. What what shine are we looking at possibly getting from a mat using the micro meshes? What's the 
best case scenario. You want do you want me to get Robert on the link? I could send him I'm sorry? You want me to send him a link? Oh yeah. All right, let me see if he wants to go on with us. Well, we're moving on up to the sky. Um, it's not bad so far. It's not gloss, but it's definitely not matte. Well, you know what? It's still matte. Let's not lie. But it's clean. It's definitely uh, better to leave it each one for a little while like that and just let it let it um, do its thing. You kind of have to beg it to um, comply. I guess those little scratches that the previous one le leaves um there he is robert's on with us now Eli. okay cool what's going on robert not much just hanging out i've uh been downstairs i was working on a bowl and then i was uh just working on some other stuff so i thought i'd take a break and see what was going on and your channel is what Crosscut Creations. On YouTube, Crosscut Creations on YouTube, on Instagram, and Facebook. That is correct. And you're and you're up in uh, somewhere up in the northeast or Midwest, Illinois? Uh, no, I'm actually in northeast Ohio getting the same snow Bob is right now. Bob and oh. I live about an hour apart. Oh, I thought that you lived... Somewhere in Illinois for some reason. Uh, nope. I'm I'm an Ohio kid. Wow, dude. Well. <laughs> Surprise. That's news to me. For some reason, Bob, I thought that um, Robert lived, and then you made, like, some sort of trek up. You yep. know? Robert and I are actually very close friends, and we live very close to each other. We're only about 40 miles apart. And where's your shop located, Robert? Like in, in your home, et cetera? Yeah, it's, uh, I've got half the basement. So I have about 15 to 20 feet wide and probably 20 or 30 or 40 or so feet long. So it's, it's narrow, but it's, it's, it's a fairly long shop. I need to do some organization, but it's, it serves me well. And um, I take it that you enjoy the lathe quite a bit. It's Bob's fault, but yes. <laughs> he started this whole thing, and it became my favorite tool. So I started uh, on a on the big Harbor Freight lathe, and I kept turning and kept turning, and then I eventually decided to upgrade to the uh, MIDI Rikon variable speed lathe um and that thing has just opened all kinds of all kinds of doors to fun projects that i just enjoy 
Well, so, and why is that? Because you can turn the uh, uh, bowls the, out beyond the uh, the bed of the lathe and whatnot, or why? Uh, I can I can turn slightly bigger bowls, but it's uh, it's got a bigger range of. Uh, it's got a bigger range capability of RPM. So the Harbor Freight one, you can go about uh, six or 700 to somewhere around 3000. Uh, the Rikon, you can go all the way down to about two, somewhere between 220 and 250. And I can crank the RPMs on the Rikon up to about 34 or 3500. And then it's also uh, the head and tail stock is way more accurate as well. So, and it's a lot quieter. So it's it's a nice lathe. What brand again? You said uh, I have the Rikon Variable Speed. So you can dial it in and stuff, right? Yeah, it's got it's got the variable speed, and it also has uh, reverse, which is really nice for sanding. Oh wow, dude! I see what you mean. Yeah. It's um, yeah, <laughs> it's nice. And and you were turning a bowl just now. Yeah, I got a uh, a chunk of walnut when I was at a pen turners gathering in September. So I just started that. I just put the first coat of sanding sealer on it. So I'm just letting that sit for a while. So, have you ever had to um, say after the fact? fill in a um, piece that you're working that's resin with um, CA glue or crazy glue? I have done that. Um, there are times where I'll, I'll have little uh, divots or air pockets. So um, I actually follow um, RJB Wood Turner on YouTube. He, uh, he, sh he showed in one of his videos that he just drops in a few a few drops of CA where those voids are, builds it up to the surface, sands it off, and then builds his CA finish uh, after he fills the voids. Um, and so when when you turn, it's like it's nothing was nothing, right? Right. It's yeah. It's uh, as long as you're. Basically, once you're happy with the way it turns and the way it, it looks, um, it's at that point you can start sanding and filling and doing all that kind of fun junk. So Bob turned you on to the lathe. What? How did that? How's that story go? So we ended up. Um, I had said that I was considering getting a lathe, so. He said, well, come on over and we'll, we'll make some, some tools, some lathe tools. And, uh, we ended up, I ended up going down to his shop and we, we made a, a medium size set of carbides. Uh, we used, we got the, the square, the circle or the round, um, and then the diamond tool. Um, I turned the handles. He did a lot of the metal work. Uh, to prepare that stock, and then we we put them together. And after that, that was the first time I had ever actually used a lathe, and I just kind of got instantly hooked. So later, I had asked him if we could build a bigger set because I was getting into bowls that were a little bigger. And I went back to his shop, and I did most of the metal work, and he showed me a few things. So that video is actually on my channel where we uh, make uh, bigger carbide tools. Sweet. Um, funny enough, Bob also did um, a set for me. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and so I have yet to finish the handle for this one, Bob. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and lie. <laughs> I'm a little bit of a chaotic when it comes to, um, you know, like I, I don't even know how to describe it, but I did do the handle for this, which is the first handle. Um, it's good. And I did this handle as well. And um, 
I just enjoy the heck out of it, you know. And Bob, I mean, how can how can we thank you, really? <laughs> you don't need me. To th you don't need to thank me. That's just something that I enjoy doing. It was fun when Robert first came down. He uh, he got Facebook and or and we just started talking and and then just asking him to come down was a, a treat for me because I don't get a lot of people that are up here in this area and then I found out where he was at and we became fast friends just because uh, and my uh, my son calls him my woodworking son. <laughs> Robert, Robert is getting some of the knowledge that I have because of the wood shop and stuff. Well, just for folks watching now and later on in syndication, you can go to Bob Lee's channel and request Bob Lee's lathe toolkit, and he'll get to work right on it. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> I think Patrick's workshop has one of your kits as well. So does Steve Nealon. Is that a fact? Yeah. So does Steve um, Nealon. Yeah, I think he's he's has a a video uh, of it in waiting that he's yet to finish. Of him getting that that kit ready, I'm I'm not sure if that's the exact case, but I do know that he has one of your kits. Yeah, Steve had uh, uh, well, Steve has two of the tools uh, that uh, I made. He had the third one himself that he made, so I sent him just a couple of toolbars. He was going to uh, he's eventually going to change uh, turn his own handle and. Uh, you know, do that. But Patrick, yeah, he's uh, he's got a building. I sent him literally a kit like I did you. Okay. Um. So here's what we have right now, guys, Robert. Um, and that's with two micro meshes left to go up on grits. Is that about right? Yeah, that looks that looks pretty good right now. Usually, the last two or three pads, I usually go down to about twenty seconds, but I, I count. And when I say twenty seconds, really, it's usually an unofficial. I just count to thirty. It's it's approximately a second. So whether it's actually a true thirty seconds, I don't know. But I just generally count about that long. Um, and then once I'm done with that, um, I had I have actually just switched polishes what I'll do is I will uh, take a rag and I used to use hut ultra gloss plastic polish. So okay. I would buff, I would buff on the plastic polish, um, work it in into the, the, the piece of a, a bit, and then I would buff it out and that would be, that would give it its shine. Uh, recently I went to, um, I just switched to the novice plastic polish. It's a three step where the uh, Novus 3 is a heavy scratch remover, Novus 2 is a fine scratch remover, and then Novus 1 is a, uh, uh, like, a like a polish, like a, a, a polish type thing. Um, so that's what I've been using lately on my, on my stuff. When I turn just Alumalite or resin or acrylic or whatever, um, that's the only thing I'll use in terms of finishing if i'm doing any kind of hybrid work or if there's any wood in the piece at all i'll do a ca finish and the process to finishing that is somewhat similar um it, it's a little different but it's mostly similar well um tell us about that while i give it the, the this um i'm gonna hit it with this mm -hmm. and then i'll hit it with that um, tell us a little bit about the CA glue finishes. You know, there, there might be people that out there that um, are curious, some that know that they might argue a point or, or debate a point. It's just, it's good to have the information out there. So tell us a little bit about finishing with CA um, and how shiny it can get and how lasting and well, whatever the process might be. Yeah. So when I first started to 
use a CA finish. Uh, I was using one brand um, of CA and I would do five coats of thin CA and then do three coats of medium. And I, I could never quite get it right. So eventually, you know, I, I struggled with that for a while. But when I went to the Pen Turners demo in September, um, it's in it's in uh, southern Ohio. Uh, that's usually the middle part of September. Uh, there was a demo on Mercury Flex CA, uh, which it's just another brand of CA glue. But um, instead of doing five coats of thin and three coats of medium, I went to seven coats of thin and I sprayed activator in between each coat. After I finish each, uh, after I finish each of the coats and I spray the activator, um, it might be a little rough, but it's not too bad. So what I'll do is after I finish the CA, I will take the micro mesh at that point and just very lightly, because you don't want to sand through the CA finish, I will very lightly um, go through the micro mesh and I won't spend more than five or 10 seconds on each pad. I keep moving. Um, and then after I micro mesh the, the CA, it'll be a little dull, but then that's when you put the polish on after you do the micro mesh, you'll put the polish on and that'll yeah. shine it right up. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm saying, yeah. So that's that's basically my my finishing method. I, I've I've thought about doing a video just on just on finishing, but I haven't done it yet. I I would find that very interesting, Robert, because I really just I don't I just do a very thin couple of coats of thin CA on my pens, and that's all I'm doing. But you yeah. probably laugh if you knew what I use for a buffing wax. Well, and that's the thing. Everybody's a little different. And I've, I've picked this up from, from a couple different people that, you know, as long as you're safe in your shop and you're comfortable in your shop and you find something that works for you, then, then go with it. Because if, if it works for you, then you might as well use it because what works for one person might not work for another. So if you're finding what works for you, then, then take it and run with it. Well, Actually, all I've ever used is that Johnson paste wax a little bit and buff that in. And I get a, I'm more partial to the satin type or, you know, uh, semi doll finishes. I'm not a real high gloss type person. And I seem to get what I'm looking for out of that. And if I shoot it with lacquer and, and I micro mesh it down, I usually get the end result that I'm looking for. So my are a little a lot duller than a lot of other people well and that's the other thing though if you know not everybody is a satin person or a high gloss or a semi gloss everybody's going to be a little different so just because one person likes satin doesn't mean you know that you know if, if they do something else that that it's right or wrong it's that that's just a personal preference thing that you're never going to make everybody not everybody's going to be happy with that because not everybody always enjoys, you know, gloss or semi-gloss or satin or, you know, whatever. Yeah. That was just a personal preference really, because most all the furniture I ever build and, and everything like that's always that satin finish. I, I'm very seldom. Um, I'm like I said, I'm just not a high gloss person. And so yeah. I don't look for that. All right. I don't go for that kind of a finish or that kind of a gloss. Sure. This is what we got going on here, just to show the folks. Um, and by the way, Mark Lindsay just, uh, oh, and hello to Chip Bills, Ashley. Um, this is what it got me, incidentally. <coughs> now, is that muted for what it would get you, or is that about right, or what's going on? That, that looks about right after a uh after a session of micro mesh um now at this point what i would do if that was if that was a pen blank that i was doing i would take some sort of uh polish 
or wax and then buff it in. And then once you're, uh, once you get it buffed in, I would buff the, the polish out. So, um, Mark was mentioning something about straightforward forward paraffin wax. Well, we have this min wax finish wax mm -hmm. paste and it has all that in there. And what say you, I've got this and I, I like this stuff. And I also have this scratch and swirl remover there. Yeah. I, um, you could use either or both of those. Um, I know there are people. There are people who use the HUD Ultra Gloss, like I've mentioned. There are people who use the Novus, like I've mentioned. There are people who will uh, use a Meguiar's plastic polish. Um, there are some people who go to the automotive store and get get a uh, like a wax polish from there. It really depends on just what you what you want to do and i've i've seen people have success with with all of those products but so, the general buffing is the same it's you you buff it on you, you you wipe it you work it in and then you eventually uh buff it out okay so i'm gonna go for the heck of it whatever we're gonna go with the, this wax here the mid wax yeah We're going to just go ahead and do that. Um, we have to pick something. So that's what we're picking. Now, that's kind of what I go with with the pen blanks. Uh, like I said, I'm no authority. I'm just playing around. With, with is, that what you, is that what you use? That's what I use on my pen blanks with a lacquer finish or even on my CA finishes. I don't put as much CA on my pens as what Robert does. But that's a that's like you, Robert says that's always a preference, and um, that type of a situation. So everybody's different, but what if you get the results that you're going for? I don't see anything wrong with just playing, or even practicing. <laughs> well, this one's going to go up on. I'm building a a um, series of um, items to um, put up on my. Story. So, you know, test piece live and finished piece at the same time. Um, I was going to say so. Oh, so what can we do with this stuff here? Because that this is good stuff. I've actually tried to cast that in additional resin so i actually have a couple pen blanks uh in my basement right now that have that material in it i haven't turned them yet so i don't know if they'll actually turn out or not i'm, I'm a little nervous that they won't turn out because even with the color that you with the pigments that you put in the the strands come off appearing white so i don't know what kind of effect that produces but i actually have a couple blanks in my basement that I've that I've put in put back into resin just to see what would happen. That should be interesting, dude. Um, I mean, I've got plenty. Do you want me to ship you out a whole batch? <laughs> I, I <laughs> you can do whatever you want, but I think I'm covered for a little while. <laughs> well, I'll show you the uh, pens. I just finished. I put up a a video the other day or the other week. Last week, I think it was, you um, premiered uh, a video and I went up on there and stuff. And and I've seen Rory May doing a bunch of premieres and stuff. And I just said, oh, well, what the heck? I'm going to do a premiere. Um, so we, I premiered this one here. And funny enough, that looks good. Um, it came out really nice. Funny enough, Bob, um, now that the neighbors are playing the Cuban, I decided to go total uh, Cuban music with that video and give it that Miami vibe. Um, <laughs> In the and now I'm paying for it because the neighbors are freaking <laughs> so there's within the context of art it's okay but within the context of um, annoying your neighbors it's not so good <laughs> I, I don't know how to explain it but yeah I did that video um, here's another I, I like this one a lot oh I really like that that looks really good it's such a nice you know have you tried the mica powders yeah you have uh, I use Caster's Choice mica powders. 
that's what I've, that's what I've gotten into so far. I know there's other ones out there. I know there's Pearl X and there's glow powders and there's, I know there's other ones out there, but I've only ever used Caster's Choice so far. Um, and how about, and how, well, you know what, um, now that we're, let, you know what, let me, let me polish, buff this out, okay? Real quick here. I don't want to wait too long. I hope I didn't haze it up permanently. No, oh, I see it getting shiny. How light do you go when you're buffing out? If I'm if I'm buffing, I usually use a little more pressure, but I'm not like I'm not going full bore at it. I usually right. I usually I usually buff around the same 750 RPMs, and then. Well, you you say that, but I, I, you know, for me to change that up, I have to go in the guts here and do that with my leg. That, that is true. Um, but usually, um, I, I will usually apply a medium amount of pressure when I'm, when I'm buffing out the, the, uh, either the wax or the polish or, or, you know, whatever I'm buffing. Oh, that looks boy. nice, dude. Yeah, that came out nice. That buffed up pretty well. What say you? I think it looks good. Yeah, it looks smooth from what it, when you rock it like that, I can see the light shining, glistening off of it. Yeah. All right. Well, heck yeah. Um, so I have to remove the back of this. We're going to set this to the side. Um, I was taught a long time ago not to, to leave a conversation hanging on um and then walk away, <laughs> but I did it. <laughs> but I did it anyways. Uh, okay, so like it happens. So this is my little, uh, the one that I, and I have links to all the stuff that I use as affiliate links down there for like people that come later on and they're watching this and they're like, uh, cause I'm going to leave this up there. I, I, I had a travesty the first half when Dave, the barber was here, we were trying to figure out how to keep this darn thing on this, um, uh, face plate. Cause I used this, um, tape double sided. It flew off. I used regular sort of like a masking tape with hot glue flew off. And then I lost the piece I was initially I was initially going to do tonight or this afternoon, and um, it fl flew right behind me somewhere. So I got to go fishing for it. But we ended up with this one here, which looks pretty cool. Uh, these are the micas that I'm using, um, and it's got quite a variety of of colors in there. You see, I've got a hurricane mess of colors there, but I've enjoyed the heck out of these. They're fun. Uh, what's that? They're, they're fun. They're, it's, it's always enjoyable to experiment with different colors. And if you decide that you don't see, if you don't have a color that you, that you want, um, mixing micas is also an option. So if you put, you know, if you want to darken, darken a certain color, add some black or, you know, if you want to lighten a color, maybe add some white or, you know, if you want to mix colors, I I've never tried it yet, but I know that there are people who do have success with that. Yeah. That sounds like a good, I'm not, I, I, so I just, it was like what, two weeks ago that I ordered this pack of mica, um, this little grab bag of, of mica. Um, and I ordered finally the, um, Alumalite stuff. Do you use Alumalite resin? I do. Yeah, I, I use the regular, uh, I use the Alumalite, um, whatever their regular is. It's a seven minute setup time. Yeah, that's the one that I use. Um, it's the clear. It's really good stuff. Did you know the biggest surprise to me was about that uh, mm -hmm. Alumalite? And by the way, we have links there uh, so you can check it out for those of you that 
that come here uh, later on in syndication. And those of you on here as well, you can see uh, the, and in fact, the video before shows all the little tricks. Because making these pendants, it's not just turning the pendant. Then you have these microscopic for, I mean, with your ogre hands, I can't imagine how one would try to get up in there and try, well, uh, there's all this hardware that goes um, onto it. You have to drill a little hole there and you've got the cord and then you've got, you know, the uh, lobster claw thing or you've got these barrel uh, closing uh, pieces. And so there's a whole thing. So in the previous video, the one that I premiered, what, yesterday with the salsa music and stuff, um, I, I listed all that, the affiliate links down there and stuff, just, you know, the whole assembly of the thing. But um, getting back to what I was, I was going to say, um, I went down a rabbit hole and I can't get back, man. <laughs> if I had it. <laughs> If I had a nickel for every time Bob told me I went down a rabbit hole, I could retire. <laughs> there was something that I was going to say about this, and it, it totally slipped my mind. Um, oh, I can see Mama Bear says, trying to use India ink on the end of a skewer works wonderful, drawing it through the resin that's already been poured. It comes out really cool. Okay, so that's where I was going. And by the way, Mark says double-sided tape is a tool pf the devil piss off what what's pf what's the abbreviation of pf does anyone don't know about that <laughs> um so you know and thank you dave dave birch david birch for saying that that looks cool as well as mark um i, I really think so and to be honest and i appreciate everybody that's given me tips today um a great tip so like the wood barber, he's over in England, and I'm sure that he's, like, crashed out. I don't know if he's hanging around no more, got excited and went and started turning, you know, on, on, uh, you know, on the lathe himself. But um, we managed to get this thing so that it wouldn't flip, you know, fly off. But now I'm stuck with this issue of wanting to get it out clean without having that, that hot glue uh, sticking to the back. So that's an issue that I want to take care of. But um, – a, a lot of thanks to you guys as well, you know, Robert, Bob, everyone that, that chimed in um, with the tips. I really like the micro mesh tip that you said. Uh, I, I'm taking, I'm going to be taking more time with it as opposed to going in and then re and just keep going. I'm going to take more time and let it ride a little bit. So that's like, I'm not going to do the 30 second thing that you do because it really is annoying to count in your head while you're trying to enjoy a, a smooth ride down the highway. I don't, I don't I, disagree. I don't know how you do it, man. <laughs> uh, sometimes I don't know either. <laughs> but um, did you say you hot glued? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No. Go ahead. Go did ahead. You say, go you, did, did you say that that the pendant there is hot glued onto that block? That is correct. Double sided taped. Do you have a no. um, Do you have a heat gun? I do. No, I, I do not. Okay, because I was gonna say a heat gun would would uh, melt that that hot glue back down enough that you could pop it off and then maybe wipe it off with some acetone or or some denatured alcohol or something. Um, I have a a, a hair blow a uh, hair dryer somewhere. <laughs> that might do it, but I don't know if it would get it hot enough. Yeah, I don't know. You could try. You, you, you could, yeah. You could try. Yeah, I mean, I could fork under it, spatula under it, but you yeah. know that that's stuck with the the, the grain uh, of the wood and all that stuff. So I'm gonna have to try the um, the the hair dryer. Um, what would you do? What would you do if um? If you don't want this to fly off, in and order to get. Personally, I haven't had enough experience with it. Uh, I'm still experimenting. I one thing I found out about the hot glue is with my chair that I'm doing, it screwed my uh, templates up. So I, I had to change what I was doing. I'm not, I'm not very successful with hot glue and. 
So what method do you guys use to attach pendants? Uh, or to, yeah, what I'm doing. What would you have done different? I think what you're doing is experimenting, and I think that's probably going to teach you the best. Robert probably has better ideas. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, but honestly, I probably would have gone either hot glue or double-sided tape, just like you've already mentioned, because that's what I, I mean. I don't even have double-sided tape, and I'm just getting into hot glue now. So I've... Um, Cause I'm, I'm doing some hybrid pen blanks. Um, I just, you know, I, I just put a, a dab of glue on, on the, on the wood piece of the pen blank and then I pour the resin around it so it doesn't float. So I, and I mean, I do have a hot, uh, uh, um, like a heat gun. So I'm, I'm able to, uh, put some heat on the, um, oh heck my words are gone. I put some heat on that hot glue spot and then it melts it enough that it'll release and then you can clean it up from there. Gotcha. So I might make a trip to Harbor Freight. What say you? Yeah, that works. There's uh, Harbor Freight has some heat guns. I know I got mine. Um, I think I got a Wagner heat gun for like 20, 20 bucks or something at but you can get them cheaper at, at Harbor Freight. I think I got mine at Home Depot. Um, I initially got mine at Home Depot because I was working on um, taking some paint off off some exterior, but that didn't work at all. But, you know, it is what it is. I, 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 lear I learned from that and repurposed it. <laughs> so, all right. Um, we've got this which came out good. And this is what we did yesterday. We have a video, so go check it out. There's salsa music or ancient, um, ancient. There's tribal freaking Cuban music on that video. And as a punishment for my sins, the neighbors are going full blown uh, volume all the way to my house. I've got this one that I did uh, last week, and I've got a few others that I've done. And I have an Etsy store, Etsy store, and that's linked below as well. We're doing pendants. We've been doing a lot of scroll saw stuff. So there's a balance, right? Um, the lathe is addicting. But there's also the scroll saw, which is addicting as well. It's just, you know, signs and whatnot. Um, do you guys have stores, shops? Tell me. Tell us. I've just got my YouTube channel, Bob Lee's Woodshop, and I'm also on Instagram under R.E. Lee. That's the only two places I'm actually at. Go ahead, Robert. I was going to say, I've got my YouTube channel, Crosscut Creations. I'm also on Instagram as Crosscut Creations, and my website is extremely similar. Uh, cross-cut-creations.com. I've got a store up there. There's some t-shirts. There's some other hand-turned stuff. I've got some other small items there. So go check that out. Absolutely. So uh, a couple of things. Um, oh, I'm sorry. So David Birch says, would contact cement work like for Formica? I've never done resins. Um, the back of Formica or, or those laminates um, are, are group, you know, they have texture to it. Um, I don't know. That's a good question to, to investigate. What, what do you guys think? My immediate thought might be that, that, that that might be a little too permanent, but I, I don't have any experience with that. So again, it would be an experiment. Okay. Well, well, we'll leave that one for a, a possible video experiment video because if it, the, 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 the thing about, I, I want it to be fast, quick, and easy, nice, nice, but fast, quick, and easy to make because of obvious reasons. Um, Mama Bear, she said, Tracy Keaton says, alloy. Let me read alloy. She said, <laughs> above, alloy, just don't heat it up too much because you can end up melting the resin piece itself. Yeah, so I'd have to be careful with that. See, I'm, I'm trying to figure that out if this is, so like, 
um, Robert just said that he, he you use the same method to do pe pendants. Robert, uh, what? Um, you were listening. Were you for pens? No. What method? Um, the I'm sorry. The um, glue. Hot glue. Oh, oh, for the C, uh, the for the hot glue. Yeah. Um, I've never actually turned any pendants, but like when I when I make uh, hybrid pen blanks, I'll put a dab of hot glue on the wood so it'll stick in the mold, and then I'll pour the resin around that so the wood doesn't float in the resin and then screw up the blank. Okay. All right. Well, so I, I enjoy the, the pendant making. So um, go and check it. So everybody out there, um, check out their channels and, and check out the channels out there if you don't know about Robert Crosscut Creations and Bob Lee, Bob Lee's workshop on YouTube, the Instagrams, we're all connected anyhow. And in fact, they just mentioned their websites. Um, and my website, uh, as well, all our websites are through Makers Media Network, uh, I'm sorry, through Harneal Media. And we've, we're all members of Makers Media Network. Um, so if you're a maker out there that run across this and want a website, well, it's not through us directly, but it's through a Har Harneal Media, and they, it's a very personalized thing for makers. So you get to say, oh, I like this, I want this. It's, it's more personalized as opposed to going with like these big name brands. So you can go into harnealmedia.com and just request a quote, what you need, and this and that for makers. So they, they cater to makers uh, uh, specifically. Um, and th that, that, that's about accurate, right, guys? Yep, yep, pretty much. Steve, Steve is fantastic. He is top-notch. Yeah, he is. He's under the weather a bit. I think he's got, like, a cold or possibly a flu. That's um, – he, he said as much, Steve, so he's under the weather. So I hope you get better, Steve. All you guys out there, thank you for hanging out. Um, I'll catch you next time. Check out that other video and leave – It'd be nice. Check out the other the other video. Leave a comment and stuff, and um, let me know what you think. It's much smoother than our adventure today because this is real time. And but it was a good thing that we did this because we got some great tips, which is awesome. So I'll catch you guys next time. Say goodbye, guys, while I turn that off. Good night, all. <laughs> Have a good one, Robert. Catch you later. Sounds good, Bob. <laughs>